Welcome back to What Would You Ask podcast. My next guest, one of those guys, is going to go and see what he can get done in the tank. Hopefully he doesn't get eaten by the sharks. At least this guy's a big, you know, NFL football player. No one, you know, he's not getting threatened by Kevin, for God's sakes. Uh, he is the founder of Brazen Life. How about that? You remember that. It's that foam roller. But as Nate says, um, it, you know, most of them suck. And this one doesn't suck. Uh, and I, I believe it was called Morph, right? Wasn't that what it was, Nate? Um, mm -hmm. collapsible, which is the real key. Think about it. I mean, if you're like Nate and I, professional athletes, uh, well, at least Nate, um, you want to have something that you can throw in your, you know, your bag. I know we're not all traveling today, but we all do. And you can throw it in your, you know, your luggage, pop it out. You pull it, remember you pull the thing apart and it pops in and there's nothing like it. If you don't use rollers, you're not uh, living because all the pro athletes use them and it's like mandatory. Even in college, we use them. I couldn't go to the next level. It wasn't good. Um, he appeared in ABC hit show Shark Tank season nine, episode six. Nate Laurie, welcome to What Would You Ask podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm I'm excited to be here and and talk Shark Tank and talk product and all that all that fun stuff. Cool. We're not going to talk about uh, valuation or lifetime value, so you don't have to know your numbers. Not for my show anyway. Um, but you guys really did a good job yeah. there. And before we get in the tank, tell us a little bit about the creation of the product and what you what led you to Shark Tank. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think like a lot of founders that end up on Shark Tank, I was kind of just scratching my own itch. Uh, so uh, the backstory behind the product is I was a professional football player, I played in the NFL um, for a number of years, and. Yeah, I actually had a bad back injury uh, in my third year when I was playing with the New Orleans Saints and kind of through the recovery process after surgery, really adopted foam rolling as a way to manage pain, uh, take care of my body, make sure, you know, everything was aligned um, and, you know, kind of learned a lot more about what it was to uh, take care of the recovery process. Um, and, and having that be just as important a part of my workout as uh, the actual like lifting weights and running and all that stuff. Um, it really is, you know, one of those pillars for athletes and really everybody just being able to uh, massage muscles, stretch, uh, and, and be able to uh, take care of your body in a meaningful way on a daily basis uh, means a lot for how you move, how you feel uh, when you wake up, how you feel when you go to bed, um, and so, yeah, just discovered, you know, what it meant to use a foam roller consistently and how that could keep me on the field. So, um, my issue with foam rolling was I would travel a lot. I would go to different gyms. I would go out to workouts at the track, or I would be traveling in the off season a lot, uh, just exploring, um, and being on the road. And I wouldn't take my foam roller with me because it's bulky. It doesn't fit in a backpack. Uh, it's a pain in the butt to put in a carry on and like take other stuff uh, that's, you know, meaningful for a trip. And, and so I would just leave it behind and I'd come back and I'd feel uh, worse. You know, my body I'd, would be in pain. I'd set myself back. And so I wanted just an easy way that I could take care of my body, maintain that, you know, kind of recovery tool that that practice, that mobility practice that I had gotten used to uh, with me no matter where I was at. And so, uh, you know, the... The result of that was what if I could take a foam roller, make it flat so it would easily slip in my backpack. So I never had to have this like internal debate of whether I was gonna take the roller, or not take the roller, which I usually ended up not taking it because it was just such a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, so that, that sparked the idea. Idea. I finished my career, uh, took over uh, kind of a family business and you know, kind of learned the ins and outs of running uh, a, a product that sells directly to cu customers, has a wholesale business, all this stuff, uh, sourcing. Uh, so learn that. And then, you know, kind of as it got down the road and um, I got to the point where I was like, you know, that idea was still in the back of my head. Like, what if I can make this thing? Let's, let's go ahead and try it. So built a rudimentary prototype and um, took another couple of years to really uh, jump into it with, with both feet. But yeah, we, uh, we ended up creating an awesome product and uh, eventually made it onto Shark Tank. <laughs> Where were you in your business when Shark Tank became an option? It seemed like you've had, you know, the business was developed a little bit. You certainly were in infancy stage. 
Right. Yeah. So we, uh, so like I said, I, you know, I built that initial prototype in the garage, uh, you know, really a couple of years before we launched. Um, and then it was just like every, you know, every month I would spend a weekend in the garage, just tinkering and trying to make it better. It finally got to the point where I was like, you know what, this, this thing could be awesome uh, if we really went for it. So jumped all in and then ended up launching a crowdfunding Kickstarter campaign at the end of 2015 took us about a year to figure out production uh, and actually get the thing made uh, to the quality standard that we have. We set really high quali quality standards uh, and shipping it out. And so that took us right to the end of 2016 and the beginning of 2017 um, when, uh, you know, we finally had some inventory for the first time. Um, it was about three or four months later that we were introduced to uh, one of the producers of Shark Tank uh, who, who liked the, the product. I really liked the story. Um, and that kicked off the initial conversation. So we were still pretty young. I mean, we were just, I don't know, four or five months into having product and trying to figure out scaling ad spends and, uh, doing, you know, Facebook acquisition and all this stuff that, that you learn as a kind of an e-commerce business. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then Shark Tank came along. So you get out to Culver City, you know that because they remind you in every interaction you have with the producers that are assigned to you. Uh, by the way, I think uh, Nate is, is 109 or 110 of the entrepreneurs we've had for our Shark Tank series. I'm asking you boys. Uh, 110. There you go. So 110. And so we've heard some of the stories about being assigned the producers and the, the Bible uh, that you have to fill out to apply and all the paperwork and all of that stuff. So by the time you get to Culver city, you think you're, you know, you're halfway there. Um, and literally you are only halfway there because you can get bounced onto the producer pre show. They always tell you, and, and we hear that they end the calls with you're doing great, Nate, but um, you know, it doesn't guarantee you're going to be on the show. Tell us how you're feeling yeah. now. I mean, you went out there, your partner, it was Tom, I think was, is with you out there too. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Where are you guys in that? Are you are you thinking we're ready to roll through, you know, run down these thing the doors like they're blocking sleds and and get into the tank and kick butt? Or you know what? I think I left something back at the hotel. I gotta run. I'll be right back. I hope I don't miss it. Tom, have fun. Um, where's your where's your confidence? Yeah, I mean, we were obviously super excited to be in the process. Um, and you know, love the product that we have and you know. Are, have since launched some new products and they're in the process of launching a couple of new, you know, even, even, uh, you know, I, I think equally game changing products. Um, so had a vision back then of where we were going and where we wanted to be. Um, and we're excited, you know, I, I guess anytime you launch a product or anytime you, you go through this process, you have something that's cool and innovative and you talk to people about it. They're like, well, you should be on Shark Tank. And, you know, I think that goes to the back of every, every entrepreneur's mind. Um, and so to be in that process, I think we were pretty confident. Uh, I, I don't love, you know, public speaking, you know, the whole process of, of selling isn't, isn't like my natural state. So I'm a little bit terrified inside um, knowing that, you know, having seen the, the uh, tragic outcomes of some of the Shark Tank entrepreneurs that go up there and just get blasted. Um, I do. But, I have to I mean, tell you, I do love. I do love your comment to uh, Mark Cuban when you said you own a sporting goods team. That was the best because there was like a delayed reaction from Mark, and he's like, "Did he say sporting goods?" And he goes, "What sporting goods?" And you're like, oh, "You know, I'm trying to get this thing out, man. Give me a break." But that was funny as hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's interesting because I mean, you, you see it, and you're like, you know, this is kind of natural conversation. But you get up there. And all of a sudden you have all the sharks asking you questions and they're yeah. coming from all over and yeah. your brain is racing a thousand miles per hour, kind of anticipating what's coming next. And then, yeah, just something slips out of your mouth that does. And I, that, that happened to me a couple of times. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we spent a lot of time, you know, knowing our numbers, uh, you know, going over what questions we could, could be asked and preparing for all that stuff. And, uh, so I, I think we were pretty well prepared, but, but yeah, in the heat of the moment, you never know what's going to come out of the mouth. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so had, had some, had some interesting clubs there, but it, it's all good. It worked out. 
So you had um, Mark, you had Damon, you had um, Sarah and Lori and Kevin, right? So Sarah was the mm -hmm. guest shark on that yep. show. Um, did you know ahead of time that Sarah was in for Robert? They give you that. And was there a, a specific shark you were looking to cut a deal with? Yeah, we found out. Uh, so, so basically they let you know, uh, you know, when you're going to go and shoot uh, a couple of weeks before, right? So you have a couple of weeks to, pre to prepare and like really get ready. Uh, and then they let you know who your, your shark panel is um, about the same time. So yeah, uh, we knew going in that, that Sarah would be on there and uh, you know, that was exciting. The founder of Spanx, uh, amazing entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think that uh, we, imagined Mark Cuban would be a natural fit because he does own the Dallas Mavericks, not a sporting good team. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, is in the world and, you know, knows, knows about recovery and what that means. And it was funny and, and you kind of prepare for Kevin to, to offer these oddball, you know, royalty, royalty. type deals. Yeah, where he maybe gives a chunk of equity and then you're also paying him royalties until he gets paid. And so you're kind of planning for all those contingencies. And um, we didn't prepare for uh, Mr. Wonderful to be like, I love this thing. I foam roll all the time. You know what I mean? And yeah. like defending, you know, kind of touting what, you know, how important foam rollers were. Uh, so that was a little bit of a godsend. And, and when, you know, he wasn't coming at us. We were like, okay, we could relax a little bit and start to think about the offers that we're, that we're going to, you know, come to the table. So when we find out, so when you committed to come on the show, we sent out that, you know, you know, you guys are coming on and we got a bunch of questions back. One of the questions that the, uh, hence the name, what would you ask? We want to involve our audience to ask questions, pick guests, pick series even. Um, um, one of the main questions was, why did, did you ever the, ask you this? Did you ever find out why Mark Cuban went out and you asked him what I thought was a natural follow-up, which was, can I ask you why? And it doesn't matter was his answer. That was very strange. Did you not think so? Or did you find out why? No, we never found out why. Uh, still to this day, it's, it's kind of a mystery. Uh, Cause like I said, I mean, going in, I thought he would be, the most natural fit uh, for what we were trying to do. And yeah, I mean, he even like the product, could... he was complimenting the product. Yeah. Yeah. And bails uh, on it. Yeah, there's no way to not like the product. It's an awesome product. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I can be overly cocky. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah, it's still kind of a mystery. The only thing I could, you know, surmise is maybe he owns some equity and uh, something competitive. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I thought too. Yeah, but I, I don't, we never, yeah, we never got any answers to that, to that question. Very interesting. Um, so you guys go in asking for 225 for 10%, I think was what you were looking for. You were, and you had some numbers, you, what you, 50,000 for the current month, I think is what you were forecasting, right? In sales. So it wasn't like yep. you're, you were, um, um, you were going to be profitable in the current month. Uh, and what was your goal? The goal with the Sharks was to what? Just to um, increase, because you had the manufacturing with your father-in-law. Um, and you were just looking to get larger quantities to reduce the cost. I think that, I remember that being one of the issues. But what, what was what was the goal to lock on to the Sharks with? What did you need their help with? Yeah, I mean, you know, at that stage, uh, being growth minded and still kind of being in that, that same phase of like uh, pushing growth, thinking about the next series of products, having a partner, um, you know, when you, when you take money as an entrepreneur, uh, you're, you're giving up a little bit of the control that you have uh, of the company um, to somebody that, you know, is now a partner with you having, having some of those sharks and their, you know, they're not necessarily supply chains, but all the, all the um, teams that they have, all the, you know, things that they have access to, their processes, all those things are really important for a young company. Um, and, you know, 
being being part of that family, I think can really help accelerate young companies. Uh, so that's kind of what we were looking to. We, we've always kind of looked for uh, partners that would be, um, you know, bring something e e extra to the table that would be kind of aligned with values or uh, outlook and that kind of thing that could, could you know, help for the business, accelerate the business. So yeah, that's kind of what our mindset was going in. So you end up getting kind of a, a, a shark fest going on down at the OK Corral over here. Damon came in. <laughs> first and he kept yep. he had to move his stuff all over the place and um <laughs> you know then you had Lori and sarah they got together kevin did the whole shazam me you know kevin and damon are together now and yep. they dropped to 50 i think it was 225 for 15 percent uh and then you guys you and tom just kind of huddled quickly and said uh we're going with the shark hats what was that was that a hard choice for you guys or were you looking for sarah and Lori? just thought from a retail. And I mean, you, like you said, both great entrepreneurs. Right. Exactly. Uh, I mean, we, we really couldn't have gone wrong uh, either with, with either choice. I think, you know, knowing Lori's background with QVC and Sarah's background, um, you know, I, I, as she said, she uh, was an owner in the Hawks, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And, and so, it felt right. Um, it felt like a natural fit, you know, looking at going into retail and all of that stuff. Uh, Lori and Sarah were um, awesome women entrepreneur. Uh, and yeah, I, like I said, it, 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 we couldn't have gone wrong either way. I, I think Mr. Wonderful at some point offered to, uh, to do a, a foam rolling scene of him in his underwear as a way to promote the product, which, uh, you know, I think I maybe that actually could work really well for us. We, you know, looking back at that, I think we probably would have been a, you know, that would have been interesting. Maybe we can still make that happen, but there you go. Uh, yeah, we, um, I think it was a gut fill for both Tom and I, yeah, we, we selected the shark heads. So we saw, you know, eight to 10, 12 minutes max. Um, and you're in there for an hour, you know, probably over an hour. Um, did anything end up on the editing room floor that we missed that you wish you were, you know, that was in there or was it pretty good reflection of what happened? Yeah, I think they did a great job. I mean, I, I'm, I actually kind of marvel at how uh, the editors bring it down to the essence of what the show is. And um, yeah, I think there's probably some stuff. It's been a few years now, but there's, there's probably some stuff that I would have liked to have had in there, uh, you know, to, to show, you know, some of the color and some of the, the stuff that, that we have going on. And, um, but yeah, I think they did an awesome job of, of cutting the episode down into the bits that really mattered. And, um, yeah, yeah, we were excited. I mean, the, the outcome was, was pretty amazing. And so, you know, on the other side of it, so you, you finished up and then you don't actually know when you'll air or even if you'll air, because there's a lot of entrepreneurs that go on and pitch, um, that never even make the airwaves, you know what I mean? So then it's just kind of like going into this process and, uh, you know, trying to prepare, trying to wonder, you know, when this, when this show could air and being as prepared as possible with inventory. And, you know, you have 7 million interested people uh, with eyes on, you, on your, your business and uh, what you've created. And it's hard to uh, get ready for that. As a, as a young company. So we'll talk about the Shark Tank effect. I want to hear a little bit about um, the due diligence. So what you can tell us, uh, you know, as far as that goes, did the deal go through with Sarah and Lori? We ended up not taking the money. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it goes, yeah, like you said, it goes into due diligence and you, uh, you, you know, you go through the process and in the end, uh, you know, terms are floated. And at the time, you know, they were talking about certain terms that didn't necessarily uh, feel right for us at the time. Um, but we knew that we could still have a good relationship uh, with both Sarah and Lori. Uh, and we still do. I mean, um, you know, I have open, open communication channels with Lori. And um, so I think it was the right thing for us. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, maybe the right thing for them too. So yeah, it, it's worked out actually really well. What was more nerve wracking, your NFL contract dispute uh, negotiations or Shark Tank? Uh, 
Shark Tank by far. Yeah, by far. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this because we, you know, it's, it's interesting that as the Shark Tank, um, I was talking to Julie uh, Goldman from the original runner company um, and she was in season two and uh, we're talking about the maturation process that the actual sharks have gone through back in the day with, you know, um, college hunks hauling junk and, and uh, Ava the elephant in those days in season one with the high tables and the money stacked up and they were coming down the elevator doors. I don't remember, remember shark tank back then, but um, it was all about, the entrepreneur needed the money and this might be the last chance for them to get to, you know, that's, that was the premise of the show. And um, now the reason why these things fail more than, and they shouldn't say fail. They just, they just fall apart um, post tank is because I think there's much more um, equality, right? The, the entrepreneur is thinking, I don't want to give up 35, you know, points six months later. Right. Then I, when I was in the tank, my, my, business has evolved. We've done this, we've done that. Um, and so it definitely becomes a, it's not one-sided and, and we're trying to get that word out there because people think, why wouldn't you take the $200,000? Um, or why did the shark do that? Did the, to that, that, you know, feeble entrepreneur, you know, it's like, it's crazy. It's, it's yeah. actually a really interesting, you know, dynamic that, that people are amazed that the entrepreneur says, no, thank you. And that's yeah. what happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, it depends on where you're at in your business. Uh, and, you know, it's the same thing. It's, uh, I think there are a lot of, you know, sophisticated entrepreneurs going onto the Shark Tank uh, that have been through uh, fundraising before. And, you know, at the end, you like I said, you're, you're taking on a partner and you have to make decisions based off a lot of factors, not just the money. And uh, so there's you know, there's a lot of different factors that you're weighing there and you're, you're considering. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that either way we had gone would have been, uh, would have been just fine. Uh, but at the time, you know, I, I think we made the right decision. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think that's part, I think that's the biggest part of it is it's like um, the entrepreneurs that they're, they have on now, oftentimes really know what they're doing uh, and know where they need their company to go and know how much equity uh, they're willing to give up for a certain amount. And um, yeah, I think that's how it goes. Let's take a couple questions from the listeners. Uh, Mackenzie from Summit, New Jersey wants to know any funny anecdotal or memorable moments that happened to you while you were on the tank? <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess this goes back to one of your, your questions earlier uh, of like what got left on the cutting room floor. So one of the things was, you know, we were we were in discussions and uh, Sarah Blakely like posed the question. She was like, you know, at home I have, you know, my home gym and we have some foam rollers there. I don't necessarily, you know, she's kind of like questioning the, and, I, and you know, the first thing I was like, well, we don't all have, you know, home gyms, like that's not a thing that all people have. And, and it was funny too, cause like afterwards, um, I think she was like, mm, yeah, that was maybe not the best. <laughs> and then afterwards our, our, you know, our producer team came up and they're like, oh, that was so cool when you said that. And like, and we ended up doing the, the, the deal with uh, Sarah. And, you know, like I said, we have a ton of respect for her, but I, I just thought that part was kind That's of fun. Funny. Was kind of we had one of the, um, oh, who was it? I always forget the entrepreneur's name. Um, one of the ones last week I was interviewing said he had a similar situation where he was talking to, um, I think it was either Robert or Mark. And he said um, they had a very utilitarian product. I don't even remember what it was. I think for some reason it was, um, interior it was like a um clog drain thing or something like that and he's but he but he said uh he was talking to either mark or robert whoever it was and he said i don't you know i i got I'm, you know i'm good with that stuff i have people that take care of that stuff in my in uh in my house and then and uh and then he said but you know what in the guest house and like but he was just talking he wasn't even he wasn't <laughs> trying to impress he said you know what we just 
we did do just redo the guest house. That might be a, a good spot where we, and then he just like stopped because he was like realizing he was going a little too far. Like, yeah, I don't need it in my, you know, 14 uh, bathrooms in the main house, but definitely maybe one of the three or four bathrooms in the guest house. It's just comical. Um, yeah. All right. So let's go to Alex from Jupiter, Florida. He wants to know, uh, where did I just lost your question, Alex? Sorry, you might have to go bye-bye. Uh, no, that's an editing question. I already asked the editing question. Um, so I got it. Let's go right to the shark tank effect. So you find out you're actually going to air, which is really good news. Um, and they probably tell you, you got two or three weeks. It's going to be, it's going to be on by season nine. I'm sure you've heard the war stories about websites and you've heard things crashing and all of that stuff. You guys are a product that people will come on and order, right? It's not, I was just talking, I mentioned talking to Juliet, uh, the, um, the wedding place with the runners she's you know they're planning six months a year out you have that event, so that's not something she didn't see a big tidal wave what was your shark uh, tank experience like yeah we had a pretty uh, amazing response from from the shark tank audience so uh, and it was interesting for us because we you know going through the due diligence process you're not you're not sure how long the, the whole process is going to take coming out um and you're not sure when you're going to air and so we realized pretty quickly that, you know, we were going to have to find ways to fund a bigger production run. So we had inventory uh, and we did not get that right. <laughs> um, we I hear that all the time. Yeah, we actually sold out of our last piece of inventory a couple of hours before the show went live. So we were on pre-order or back order um, the moment the show aired and, you know, but we, we, had, we had a bunch of material, a bunch of stock at our factory, you know, being processed and, but didn't have a way to gauge and, you know, sold a couple thousand units that night and something similar the next day. And um, that was, you know, scales above what we were, you know, producing at the time. So, uh, so we had to like respond really fast. And then we had the you know, the double effect of they re-aired us again right at the end of December. So we were just in this like process of getting caught up and starting to ship, you know, some of these, these Shark Tank orders and they aired us again, had another massive response. Um, and yeah, so we were, we actually ended up being out of stock or on pre-order for like six months, seven months, something like that, where we were shipping it, we were shipping the whole time um, but we're just shipping in batches to the earliest customers and, and getting them out. And yeah, we it was, um, we had some interesting, you know, uh, conversations with customers and customer service stuff then. But, uh, I mean, my big thing as, as a founder is wanting to always do right by the customer, right? Make sure the customer is always happy. Um, make sure that the quality that we deliver, we stand by everything we ship. And so it's just having that on, honest conversation and being as transparent as possible and, you know, letting them know the, the challenges that we're facing. Uh, and, and, you know, 99 times out of 100, the customer's like, oh, yeah, I understand. That's cool. No problem. Or they're like, that's fine. You know, I'll take a refund now and come back when you guys have stuff, you know, stuff, something like that. So, yeah, that was some interesting challenges. Um, but, it, you know, it, it allowed, it forced us to, adapt really quickly in our production side of things and so in the end we came out stronger and um you know more equipped to to continue our our growth did you find it interesting nate the um response you get it's not just consumers right you maybe some wholesalers in there even investors probably contacting you to to uh you know express mm -hmm. their interest in maybe partaking into the product as well yeah yeah, it's a it's a fascinating uh, experience. Um, you go on and you know that a lot of people are watching and you get the validity from the expertise of the sharks, right? So they're asking tough questions. Uh, you know, what you see on the show is real. You, the, the sharks don't know anything about your company before you come on. They're asking questions that uh, any investor is going to ask and it's, and it's real time and it's high stress because um, ultimately it's going to be shown to a lot of people. But yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that whole experience um, is such a platform for young and growing companies to show off what they have and to, you know, talk about 
the strengths of their business and the strengths of their brand and actually help to create a brand. So yeah, we, uh, we had an awesome experience with it. It was, it was, it was pretty great. So tell everybody how the product evolved, what's going on today with it. I was on the website last night. I saw, I have to order the morph stick now. I mean, that, you didn't have that back then. Yep. I don't think you did. Did you have that back then? No. Oh, no. okay. Cause that, that looks no, really no. cool. I could so tell us a little bit about the evolution. Well, yeah. Yeah. So we now have two versions of the roller, uh, which we didn't at the time. Um, and we're actually in the process of upgrading in, in uh, both products. So the one that's the smooth traditional foam rolling uh, version, the Bravo is going to be even more smooth rolling. Um, it's, it's really cool. Um, and then we're going to have an even like spikier version, deeper tissue version uh, for people that like that. And the, the whole concept is like people like different types of foam rolling um, and, and people that have done it, you know, you, you kind of graduate up to a different sensation as uh, you progress and you want something that's maybe more penetrating or you want something that's a little bit firmer. And we want to provide that excellent foam rolling experience uh, and then also make it portable and collapsible so that uh, you, you can use it more often. And um, so the, the base of the product um, is, is really that collapsible core technology. And then, you know, coming up with, uh, you know, better ways to, to deliver it, uh, I think, you know, is, is a big part of our future. We're really, really excited about some new products that we have coming on. We have uh, a space saving workout bench. Uh, so we're going to get into strength training. Oh, that's um, cool. So that one's, that one's in the pipeline. Uh, we have a massage gun that we'll be launching uh, at the beginning of next year. Um, so keep an eye on us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about some of the stuff that we have in the works. You know, uh, with, with COVID, uh, I think we could have gone one of two ways. Um, and we, we, you know, made a big commitment to analyzing the business and coming out of this whole thing stronger. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very bullish on brazen life, uh, in 2021. I think, uh, yeah, pay attention. If you can, if you can follow us on Instagram or, uh, on Twitter, um, keep up to date. Cause we got some really, really cool stuff coming out. Awesome. And I will tell you folks, uh, I was on brazenlife.com last night, B R A Z Y N life.com. Check it out. They got a really cool website shows you all the places they've been. It's got the shark tank stuff on there. It's, it's really cool. Plus they got all their, their stuff. Even they even got merch on there, like t-shirts and stuff. So head there anywhere else, Nate, we should look for you guys. Yeah. Just the socials. Um, follow us there and, uh, reach out to us. We love answering any questions. We love, uh, you know, talking shop. If you have any product ideas that you think would fit well on our brand, feel free to reach out. We, we take those, take those, uh, emails a lot. And, um, yeah, I know that, you know, Shark Tank does inspire a lot of people to, to want to set out on their own. And I love that, you know, I love, uh, I love people that, that, that take that, uh, risk and go for it. I will say that it's very difficult, um, being an entrepreneur and selling physical things into the world. Um, it's a challenge, but it's also really rewarding. So yeah. Cool. Well, listen, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for taking us on the journey. Thanks for the stories. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. All right. We'll see you next time on What Would You Ask podcast. <laughs>